I'd like to call the regular meeting of uh, uh, Milton City Council to order. Uh, I'd like to first welcome Pastor Jerry Dockery from the Crabapple First Baptist Church in Milton, Georgia, to give the invocation tonight. Pastor. Let us pray. Lord, we are honored to be here tonight. We're honored by your presence. We're grateful, Lord, for your design of governing, how you have laid out for us ways that enable us to administrate and organize our communities uh, for efficiency and effectiveness and comfort. We're grateful for each home that's represented here tonight. And Lord, for the entirety of our uh, city, we pray that you continue to bless us Particularly, I want to give thanks for those who serve, that you would give them wisdom and direction as they give leadership and decision-making uh, for our community. I know that uh, it's a difficult path to travel, and so I pray that your grace would abound in their lives, and I pray that, uh, Lord, you would give them wisdom, that you would fill their vision with you and your purposes. We pray that you would be glorified and honored by this gathering tonight and that all that we do would always be, Lord, for your kingdom and for your glory. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. This is the regular meeting of the Milton <coughs> City Council, 04 February 2013. Call to order. Will the city clerk, clerk uh, please call the roll and make general announcements? Uh, good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. I'll be happy to call roll for the February 4th, 2013 regular meeting. I would like to remind those in attendance to please silence all cell phones at this time. Those attending the meeting who would like to provide public comment, either during the public hearing or during the call for public comment, you are required to complete a public comment card prior to speaking on the item. There is no public comment for consent agenda items or items under first presentation. Those called to speak will be taken in the order that the speaker cards are received by the city clerk prior to the beginning of tonight's meeting. All speakers will please identify themselves by name, address, and organization if applicable. The city council may allow public comment on either an agenda item or general public comment from a representative of such an organized group or association, provided, however, that such an individual shall file a notarized affidavit that they have the authority to speak on behalf of said organization on a form provided by the city clerk prior to the agenda item being called. Demonstration of any sort within the chamber is prohibited, so please refrain from any applause, cheering, booing, outbursts, or dialogue with any person speaking. Please show the same respect to the person speaking that you will expect to receive yourself. Anyone in violation will be asked to leave. As I call roll, please confirm your attendance. Mayor Pro Tem Bill Lusk. Present. Council Member Karen Thurman. Here. Council Member Matt Kuntz. Here. Council Member Bert Hewitt. Here. Council Member Joe Longoria. Here. Council Member Lance Large. Here. Mayor Joe Lockwood is absent and excused. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the city clerk please sound the next item? Our next item is approval of the meeting agenda. This is agenda item number 13027. Are there any amendments, additions, deletions from the uh, from the agenda? Yes, there are. Um, we would like to. We would ask that you remove the proclamation, proclamation recognizing the rural Metro Day under reports and presentations for a future date. We also ask that you add an executive session to discuss land acquisition. Entertain a motion in a second. Make a motion to approve the agenda uh, as noted by staff, including adding the executive session for land acquisition. Second. second. We have a motion uh, to approve the 
meeting agenda put forth by Councilman uh, Hewitt, seconded by Councilman Longoria. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed in the like manner. <clears throat> Motion carries unanimously. The next item is public comment. Public comment is a time for citizens to share information with the mayor and the city council and to provide input and opinions on any matter that is not scheduled for its own public hearing during today's meeting. There is no discussion on items on the consent agenda or first presentation from the public or from council. Each citizen who chooses to participate in public comment must complete a comment card and submit it to the city clerk. Please remember that this is not a time to engage the mayor or members of the city council in conversation. When your name is called, please come forward and speak into the <coughs> microphone, stating your name and address for the record. You will have five minutes for remarks. Uh, city clerk, is there any public comment? We do not have any, sir. I'm sorry, say again? We do not have any, sir. Thank you. Moving on to the consent agenda, will the city clerk sound the items, please? Our first item, approval of the January 23rd, 2013 regular city council meeting minutes. Agenda item number 13028. Approval of the January 28th, 2013 special called council meeting minutes. Agenda item number 13029. Our next consent agenda item. Approval of an intergovernmental agreement concerning the processing, storage, and control of evidence within the City of Alpharetta by the City of Milton Police Department. Agenda item number 13030. Approval of a construction services agreement between the City of Milton and Middle Georgia Paving, Inc. for the application of rejuvenating fog seal in the Richmond Glen and Country Ridge subdivisions. Agenda item number 13031. Next, approval of a professional services agreement between the City of Milton and S&ME, Inc. to provide asphalt core sampling and pavement design, agenda item number 13032. Approval of an addendum to the construction services agreement between the City of Milton and Strickland Pipeline and Construction, Inc. for demolition of structures at 13690 State Highway 9, Agenda item number 13033. Our seventh and final consent agenda item this evening is approval of a professional services agreement between the City of Milton and Emergency Care Medical Group PC, Dr. Russell <coughs> Mitchell, for medical oversight for the City's Fire Rescue Department. This is agenda item number 13034. Entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we accept the uh, consent agenda as prepared by staff. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Longoria, seconded by Council Member Coons. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. <clears throat> Moving on to reports and presentations, will the city clerk please sound the item? A proclamation recognizing Georgia Day. This is being presented by Mayor Pro Tem Bill Lusk. So this uh, proclamation is to recognize Georgia Day, which will take place actually February 12th. Georgia Day recognizes that Georgia was the fourth state to ratify the United States Constitution. Since that time in 1788, Georgia has grown to over 9 million people. It's become a thriving center for commercial, financial, and cultural interests in the Southeast. I'd like to read the proclamation and have Joyce Morrison, Kim Cooper, and Gail Sands, who are here with us uh, tonight representing Chastity Chapter of the National Society of Daughters of the American Revolution in the audience, to please join us uh, 
up front uh, with along with counsel and myself for a photo uh, immediately after reading the proclamation. <clears throat> this is a proclamation, Georgia Day, 2013. Whereas the state of Georgia was founded by General James Edward Oglethorpe, who received the royal charter for establishing a colony in honor of King George II and led 116 people from England on the HMS Anne, landing near present-day Savannah on 12 February 1733. And whereas George Walton, Button Gwinnett, and Lyman Hall each signed the Declaration of Independence on behalf of Georgia, which later became the fourth state to ratify the U.S. Constitution on 2 January 1788. And whereas, since its founding 280 years ago, Georgia has grown to over 9 million people and has progressed from a rural state to a commercial, financial, and cultural center for the Southeast and the nation. And whereas, all Georgians are invited to rediscover our natural, cultural, and historic wonders and sites, and to encourage people throughout the nation and the world to recognize the people, institutions, and historic events that have shaped Georgia's significant place in our country's history and global commerce. Now, therefore, we, the mayor, and city council of the city of Milton do hereby proclaim 12 February 2013 as Georgia Day in honor of our state's 280th anniversary and call upon all Georgians and the residents of the city of Milton to celebrate our proud and rich heritage. Further, I urge all citizens to recognize Georgia Day 2013 by proudly supporting our state and continuing to hold it in the highest regard. Given under our hand and seal of the city of Milton, Georgia, on this, the fourth day of February, 2013. Okay, council, let's go down front.
Moving on to first presentation, will the city clerk please sound the item. Consideration of RZ 1215, 15260 Hopewell Road, Bar Union Park, LLC, to rezone from AG1 Agricultural to H Historic District for the existing building to be utilized as a country store on point 5240 acres. This is agenda item number 13035. Mm -hmm. Entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I uh, suggest we make a motion that we approve the reading of the first presentation. Second. We have a motion by Councilmember Coon, <coughs> second by Councilmember Thurman. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. <coughs> there are no items under public hearing. The zoning agenda or unfinished business. Moving on to new business, will the city clerk please sound the next item? Our next item, consideration of a professional services agreement between the city of Milton and EMS Ventures, Inc., doing business as Rural Metro Ambulance to provide emergency services for the city of Milton. This is agenda item number 12340. It was deferred at the December 17th, 2012 regular meeting. Mr. Bob Edgar. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Um, what we have tonight is a new agreement with Rural Metro Ambulance. Um, early in Milton's history, the city entered into an agreement for ambulance services along with Roswell, Alpharetta, and Johns Creek. And what we've done here is we've put together a new agreement that better suits Milton and the surrounding cities for emergency medical transport services. Um, our current agreement right now, it has um, six rural metro ambulances during <coughs> peak hours, which is from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., and four ambulances available during the non-peak hours, which again is from 11 to 7 a.m. Um, and those ambulances cover those four cities that I had mentioned earlier. Um, there's three dispatch centers, so anytime a 911 call comes in, it hits any one of those dispatch centers and then is sent out to the rural metro ambulances. The average response time in the old agreement or the current agreement is eight minutes, 90% of the time. Rural Metro is not able to meet that in Milton. Their average response time just last year was 11 minutes and two seconds. Um, and one of the reasons for that is our call volume is so low and our distance from where they stage the unit, which is the closest unit for us, is in Alpharetta Station 1. So that's the difficulty of meeting their, the eight-minute response time for Milton. Just to give you a perspective of where Milton is, um, if you look at the, uh, the breakdown of the calls, Milton is um, 55, almost 55 percent of our calls are medical calls. And this is just from stats from um, what you can see from the last three years. And you can see a, a little bit of an uptick in the medical calls as they're going up each year. Good, I'll go ahead and move on. Milton's average response time for the fire rescue department is five minutes and 40 seconds. So that every call on an average um, is, we're putting a paramedic on a medical call within that time frame, within less than six minutes each time. Um, and with the advanced level that we have on our, our units, we have medical drugs, we have the defibrillator and all that. So we can do everything that an ambulance crew can do. The only thing that we can't do is transport the patient to the uh, medical facility for um, advanced care. So uh, th I think that's a little more comforting. And when you look at the 11 minutes, then you see that the five minutes that we have, or less than six minutes, that we are putting paramedics on scene and doing uh, quality care. The new agreement, which the four cities got together was um, what they wanted to do was increase the number of units on scene or in the cities. So what we've done is they've agreed to take general transport units, which does inter-facility transports, and add those to the system. So going from a six unit, we're now going to go to nine units during peak hours. So when those units are not doing um, 911 calls, what they'll be doing is inter-facility transports. So the maximum would be always nine, would be nine units in, in the four cities. 
And if we had ever gotten to a point where it got below five, then they would cut off any interfacility transports. So we would always have a minimum of four units available, pretty much as where we are today with the, the non, during non-peak hours. And the, uh, the additional part of this is the dispatch. Um, what we would do is to centralize the dispatching. When, instead of having it in three different locations, they would bring it all under um, Rural Metro's roof, and they would, trans uh, they would dispatch all the units from that one location. So if it hits our 911 center, it'll go right over to um, Rural Metro. And what that does is um, it's one CAD system that's going to be interfaced with all the three, um, all four cities. So that will reduce some of the transfer time in the call when it comes in through the 911. And in addition to that, they're going to add mo mobile data terminals or MDTs, which then it shows each unit where they are all the time. So a dispatcher can look at a screen and say which one's the closest unit and they'll go ahead and make sure that they send the closest unit. And that ties in with the AVLs, which is the uh, vehicle locators. And then the CAD interface between all the um, dispatch centers. The response time changes um, in the agreement. Again, we were had an eight-minute response time criteria. Now we're going to do, for all emergency calls, go to a 12-minute response time criteria. And then for non-emergency calls, it would go to 15 minutes, which is where it was before. Under the old agreement, or the current agreement we have today, um, we were paying Rural Metro $132,250 per year for an enhanced level of service. Um, and that's what prompted this whole discussion with Rural Metro about the contract was they weren't giving us an enhanced level of service. So we were said, why are we paying for something that we're not receiving? So we said that we would no longer pay that and then an improvements would inter inter interface or integrate the um, GT units into the system of the general transport to give us a higher number of units on scene or in the field and then reduce that city's contribution by 132250 so which then we would no longer pay. Um, and that would end at the latest of June 30th. They asked for a little bit of time frame so they could get the MDTs up in all the units, the AVLs, and the um, dispatch center up and running until we went ahead and, and stopped paying that um, this subsidy. So what this does for us here in Milton is, in, as well as the other cities, is increases the available um, resources, it consolidates the communication system, and it adds the additional units, hopefully improving the number of units on scene will improve our, dispatch, or our response times for the um, ambulance. And then it does is it eliminates the subsidy that we're paying today, and then hopefully at some point we can go ahead and take that and invest that money into our system now for our first responders getting, you know, who are on scene in less than six minutes. Any questions? Yes, sir. So, Chief, what you're saying is that with the emergency care that we provide through the fire department, um, we're able to manage any issue that would exist on an emergency call in the same fashion that an ambulance would, with the exception that we can't transport the, the person to the hospital for ultimate care. So we could, so there's no risk in terms of the city and not being at, having a faster response time from the ambulance. So, so we can cover everything just on our, with our EMS teams. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Um, we, um, we provide the same level of care. Um, and most times if we have a critical call, we'll send two units. So we'll end up with two paramedics on scene. Um, so our, our intervention on scene is equal, if, if, if what I consider even better than what we're getting from rural metro. And the only problem is that we're just waiting for an ambulance, but we can do everything we need to do to get that patient ready for transport to the hospital. So with the uh, loss of the subsidy that we have to pay, is there some additional equipment or training or some way we can redirect that to the EMS crews uh, to help that, uh, to help better um, provide service or whatever? There is, and there's a um, there's a plan that um, that I've presented to the city manager to, to look at, okay. um, and he, he's considering that, and, and I hope so one day that we get to bring that forward, okay. um, that will even take that up to the next level um, where I think we should be. So, okay. and one one thing I, I want to also let you know is that the rural metro is our zone provider, and Fulton County decides on who your zone provider is. 
the four cities alone did not have a choice in who our provider was. We were told this is the provider. Um, and Region 3 does not have an established set standard for um, response times, which is a little amazing, but that has to be done through the cities or through the, um, the municipalities that they are providing service to. So. Sounds like this is a win-win for our residents, so. I, I believe so. Um, it, it, the level of care that we're providing today is, is what, I, what I consider um, state of the art, and our, our paramedics are top notch. So, anything else? I had a question. I've got, Escape. I've got one as well. If you go, I go back a couple slides to the uh, is it eight minutes to twelve minute time delay? The emergency calls not to exceed twelve minutes. Um, you just passed it. Just I'm sorry, I did. Yeah, no, I just passed it. Right there. there. Response time changes. Emergency calls not to exceed 12 minutes, but they used to be eight. Is that what you said? That's Did correct. That right? Our, so the current agreement we're under now says that the response time for a emergency call would be eight minutes, 90 percent of the time. Okay. The new agreement will say 12 minutes, 90 percent of the time. Okay. Which is actually what we're. It's basically we're getting right now. Yeah. Yeah. Their, their average this past year has been 11 minutes and four seconds. So we're not going to see that big a change. Okay. Um, but what I hope to see is with the integration of the general transport units that we're going to be more units available, which then is going to keep that number down. So the 12 minutes, I hope we don't reach that. I hope we're back into that eight minute where we should be. Now, when, when a transport situation is involved, um, are we, we're not sacrificing any of the time for a transport with this new agreement, are we? No, no. Um, and what happens when we get on scene, if we have a real critical patient, the um, officer on scene will immediately recognize that, and usually what they'll do is call for air rescue, and we'll get them going. And their response time is basically, with, um, depending on weather conditions and all that, um, probably within that six-minute mark where we are today. So. Maybe to make it clear, um, are we still performing the general transport function when uh, rural metro is not doing it? We're not doing any of the general transport. That's all what rural metro is doing. What they do is they have two sides. They have a 911 side and a general transport side. Okay. And what they've asked is that if they can bring the general transport side into the 911 side, we go from six ambulances during peak hours to nine. And then when those units are not on an emergency call, what they'll do is then go do tra general transport calls. But they'll never get to a level any less than four units available at one time. Now, do we have enough uh, EMS uh, qualified, certified personnel to uh, pick up all of this slack? Yes, and, and we've been doing that. Okay. We, we, we've been doing that. We have 17 paramedics today, and then everybody else is an EMT. So we're able to staff our units and uh, at a very comfortable level. Um, the general transport units, they have the same types of EMTs that the 911 units have? Yes, they, yes. they have a, uh, one paramedic. Um, and the minimum by the state is one paramedic and one EMT. Many times you may find two paramedics on that okay. unit, but you'll never get less than one okay. paramedic and one EMT. Okay. And they are, they are equipped the same as a 911 unit is. Okay. Maybe clear uh, one of the other points you talked about too. Uh, these districts are are actually mandated by the state, are they not? They are, yeah. Uh, and I, I said, well, Fulton County, um, I said was part of Region Three, but yes, the state tell, broke the state up into regions, and then said each region then will um, they'll name <coughs> excuse me name a provider for that region. Right. Great effort. Anybody else? I'll make a motion if we're. Time, I'll make a motion that we approve a professional service agreement between the City of Milton and EMS Ventures Inc. DBA Rural Metro Ambulance to provide emergency services for the City of Milton. Agenda item number 12 340. Second. Whoever you want to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I have a motion by Councilmember Thurman, uh, second by Councilmember Coons. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all of those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, in like manner? Motion carries. City Clerk, please sound the next item. Our next item is consideration of an agreement with Motorola related to the implementation of a unified radio system to begin phase one 
which Sandy Springs authorized on behalf of the cities of Alpharetta, Milton, Roswell, and Sandy Springs on December 18, 2012, and consideration to amend the contract with Motorola to include phase two of the project. This is agenda item number 13036, Mr. Chris Lagerbloom. Uh, good evening, Council. This, uh, this is the first step of two steps in moving forward with the radio project. Um, this was the step that Sandy Springs took in December, I believe it was December the 18th, so it probably says that somewhere, um, December the 18th of, of last year where they moved forward um, as a city alone without anybody else in hopes that we would have other cities join them um, after the first of the year. This was the phase one part basically um, builds out a radio system in Sandy Springs so Sandy Springs can benefit from it and intended on moving forward whether we went with them or without them. Um, what we would be doing by approving this action tonight would be to adopt the phase one contract um, that Sandy Springs adopted on our behalf, we thought were adopted on our behalf in, in December. Um, I'm not asking you to adopt the phase two item tonight just to make reference that we know and recognize that it's coming. What phase two will do is we'll bring it from just a Sandy Springs project into a Sandy Springs Alpharetta um, Roswell Milton project. And uh, in the dollars attached to this, um, phase one contract, a total contract cost of $4,907,747. Uh, Milton's portion of that is weighted share of 15.21% or $746,469, of which that money is budgeted in the capital projects account. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, just to summarize, this is, this is us uh, agreeing to move forward. And uh, this will be in front of Alpharetta's council this month, as well as Roswell's council this month as well. And once that occurs, all four of us will be on board with the report. Happy to answer any questions. Chris, not yes. that I want to question any of our, you know, North Atlanta, our North Fulton cities in their wisdom of adopting or not adopting this, but we do have Johns Creek is absent from the agreement. At some point in time in the future, do we have have we thought about how we're going to allow them to become part of this? Because I think that's sort of unavoidable. I may be wrong about that, but have you guys given any thought uh, about how to let Johns Creek in and, and use the facilities once they get to that decision? If they get to that decision, you know, if, if they get to that decision, what exists right now is an intergovernmental agreement between the four cities, and that IGA calls for a board of managers to convene to manage the system until the authority can be created. Now, Representative Willard has indicated he's going to introduce legislation that may have introduced today, as a matter of fact, um, to move through to create that authority. Uh, Speaker Jones has indicated her support of it and her willingness to even help expedite getting it um, adopted. Uh, there will be a process by which subscribers could attach to the system. Now, what is called for right now in the intergovernmental agreement is either one of two types, either a contributing subscriber or a non-contributing. Contributed meaning that they would capitalize a portion of the system on the front end and then also become part of the board of managers in design of, or, or in oversight of how the system is governed. The other would be based on subscribers, which would simply be somebody comes on behalf of, a, of a, either a local jurisdiction or a school or a hospital or anybody who might have a desire or need to attach to a radio system that's in the serviceable area could um, then just subscribe to the system by paying a per radio fee, probably, is, is what would happen. I said all that to say the answer is bigger than any of us in this room because it's going to require a vote of this board of managers or the authority board to determine um, how and what that might look like. Um, I, I don't know that I would rush at this point to suggest that we um, have John's Creek participate in anything more than a subscriber. Um, you know, I don't... Uh, a, a contributing subscriber at this point, you know, I, we, we might be past that. Um, but to uh, allow them to uh, potentially at some point attach to a system that's functioning, that would be functioning in their area, you know, I'd be open to at least the discussion. Yeah, and my whole point was that, you know, if we're, if we, you know, are making the commitment today, putting in the money that's required today, I want to make sure that that's recognized as, you know, we need people make decisions today, not a year from now on this. And I, and I certainly agree with you, and, and I, I think it's commendable that, you know, as a region, the four cities have stuck together. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, because of our 
population and because of our number of subscriber units, we were really effective the least in the one city going absent. We went from a weighted share of just over 12% to just over 15% now. Roswell doesn't have that same story to tell. So, um, you know, I think all four of us recognize that there are economies and efficiencies where more people attach. You know, uh, if, if you take a big number and divide it by a, big number, a bigger number, your per radio number decreases. So it makes sense to bring as many people into this system long term as can, as can fit on it without having system failures overload. But the more users, the, the less expensive it is for all of us. Lance? Well, the rural metro, would they be a subscriber on the system? Or? Um, certainly would have that ability, sure. I don't see why we would. Uh, they, we haven't entertained that discussion at this point because we don't have a system that's built right, yet. Right, eventually. Um, but, uh, you know, it, when this is built out, it is intended that this is the functioning radio system in North Fulton County. Um, we've got uh, week after next a meeting with uh, the 911 director from Fulton County, Angela Barrett, and the four cities representative. We'll go down and chat with her about how when they build out the remainder of the system for Fulton County that it's built um, as a parallel to this and not on top of this. Two, two systems, one on top of each other. So, um, intuitively, I would say that rural metro at some point will be on the system. But I think anybody that uh, needs a radio push to talk in this area is going to be on the system. Okay. Anyone else? <clears throat> Entertain a motion. Mayor Pro Tem will make a motion um, to approve the consideration of an agreement with Motorola related to the implementation of the unified radio system to begin phase one with Sandy Springs authorized on behalf of the cities of Alpharetta, Milton, Roswell, and Sandy Springs on December 18, 2012, and consideration to amend the contract with Motorola to include phase two of the project, agenda item number 13036. Second. We have a motion to approve an agreement with Motorola related to the implementation of the unified radio system to begin phase one, which Sandy Springs and authorized on behalf of the city of Alpharetta, Melton, Roswell, and Sandy Springs on December 18th, 2012, in consideration to amend the contract with Motorola to include phase two of the project. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Moving on to mayor and council reports. I've got one. Um, yeah, this this uh, past was it Wednesday. We had a little stormy weather coming in, and um, uh, we had our first test run of Code Red, which I don't know if you knew about that or not, but we. Um, First of all, commending commend to the staff, I had called um, uh, Jason and Chris as well and just thought, you know, we might want to get some more people involved because no one's going to sign up for Code Red when it's bright and sunny out, but when storms were coming, potentially people might think better of it. And we actually sent an email out. We got 30 more subscribers. But personally, I was looking at it on TV and, and um, I walked away after I made the phone calls, and all of a sudden there was an alert from Code Red on the phone, and I thought, didn't think anything of it, and I thought, well, I'll get to it in a few seconds, and got to it after about two minutes, and I realized it was Matt Merida on the other line saying, uh, Milton is now in a tornado warning, take shelter now. <laughs> and it was interesting how in a 30-second window, when I wasn't paying any attention, uh, it came through, and so, you know, right away I thought, well, I looked at the TV, and there was the Weather Channel saying, we got a funnel cloud, and this is the area that's under the warning, and you better duck and cover, so. I was loading up dogs and cats and everything in the bathroom until everything got done, but um, I was very impressed with the way it all worked. And what was more impressive was, even though I was trying to pay attention to it, I looked away for 30 seconds and still got the call. And it's so easy to miss that from a safety issue, and I just think that was a great program um, that we implemented, and, and kudos to Bob and the, the, the staff and everybody that, that worked on it. Um, I think the test run was very successful, and I just want to commend you guys. I happened to be at uh, a meeting down at the Capitol that day and uh, with about 30 other folks there, and when I got the call, 
and uh, we're sitting in a big conference room. Everybody's uh, cell phone off went off at once. So <laughs> it was difficult to uh, to miss it, but it was very effective. I, I just have one question. Will the the code red alerts come from the same number each time so I can put it in my phone so I know that it's the code red alert when it comes through or is it going to be different numbers on different times? I'm 99, I confirm it, but I'm 99.5% sure it's going to come from the same number so you can enter. That 866 yes. number? So I can say, I can put that as code red for my contact. I have it saved as code red in my phone when I get the alerts it comes from that number. Okay. When, it came, when I saw it come through it came in as code red. Because when it came through, I was in a meeting and I didn't immediately get it because I didn't realize what it was. So. I know it's an 800 number, so you think it's somebody soliciting? I'll, I'll check the rest. Sure. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Uh, just briefly, uh, Mayor's Day was what, last weekend, and uh, I think most of us attended. Uh, I didn't see everybody. Of course, I was kind of sequestered. But uh, I thought it was a good session. Uh, the meetings on Sunday morning, different uh, committees, uh, was pretty effective too. So uh, once again, I enjoyed it. Got something out of it. So hope you all did. <coughs> Moving on to staff reports, beginning with the city manager. You know, I've just got a couple tonight, and really don't even have a couple, maybe, maybe just one. Uh, we'll let you know that the audit's ongoing at this point, and so far we're in day three, day four of it, and Stacy's still here, and uh, <laughs> so that's good. Um, I know I asked at one point today if, if she had 30 minutes that she could uh, step into a meeting, and the auditor looked at me and said, no, she doesn't, and I thought, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a it was, that was That was audit humor. Um, <laughs> so well, that's as good as it gets. Isn't it? <laughs> it was it was a knee slapper. I got to tell you. Um, so uh, that's what's going on. Uh, that's what's going on today. And uh, um, let me just leave it at that. I've got one more uh, customer of loss, but I want to talk to you about it first, and maybe you can talk to your colleagues about it. So we'll talk here maybe just a couple minutes uh, after the executive session. So uh, that's, let's let's do that. That's where the bulk of what we have today. Believe it or not, actually needs to be done. Okay, is there a motion second to adjourn in the executive session? So to, moved. To discuss land acquisition. Second. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously.
I only watched it for the commercials. You did. I had no. I heard you watched it. Dog. Did you see Beyonce. Beyonce. Mm -hmm. I didn't watch a minute of it. It was exciting, yeah. Blackout Bowl. I did hear that. Entertain a motion to reconvene the so regular meeting. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Large. Second by Council Member Hewitt. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do you want to bring anything else up? I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay. okay. That concludes. Uh, move to adjourn. Second. Second. I have a motion and second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Aye. Aye. Thank you.